Okay. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. I'm Ernie Martin. I'm with the Maine Department of Transportation. I'm the project manager for the Searsport Route 1 project. Hopefully everybody had a chance to sign in back there, comment cards, self-stamped address envelopes, agendas, my contact information's at the bottom of that if you need to get a hold of me. Um, we're here again. We were here last time, I believe, toward the end of March of 2016. It's been a little while. Uh, obviously the project begins at Savage Road and goes all the way down to Station Ave, which is the other end. Uh, we've, we've had a little discussion with the town and we've incorporated um, to discuss tonight because I wanted to come back and just, this is an update, me, updated meeting, this isn't part of our normal process, but I felt it was critical that we come before you to talk about this change. I know we had some comments kind of sort of related to what we've got up on the plan today that we'll talk about. Uh, here in a second. Uh, with me this evening I have Andy Lathe, he's my assistant with the department. We also have Tim Higginson from Lewis Berger Group, he's going to talk about the design and then once we get done the presentations we'll take uh, questions and answers from you and then I'll talk a little bit about timeline where we go from tonight. When we do the Q&A um, we'll just need you to come up at the mic here because um, it is being televised we just want to make sure folks that are watching on their TV sets can hear the questions and hear our responses. So the biggest change that I just briefly touched upon already is from Trundy Road right here all the way to Station Ave. You know we're looking at a three-lane section and Tim will talk about uh, that. And I'll turn it over to Tim. He can talk briefly about the end of the project. This end of the project hasn't changed from our last meeting. We're still doing stuff related to that section. As I mentioned tonight's more of an update for everybody to get comments related to this because it is it is a big thing and I just want to hear feedback. I'm sure we'll hear a lot of the same comments that we heard last time but that's okay too. So with that I'll turn it over to Tim. Good evening. So for you, those of you that are here last time uh, you heard us talk about the corridor and the improvements. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna walk through uh, quickly, just the entire corridor for those of you who weren't here, and then spend a little bit more time discussing uh, Trundy Road uh, further up to Station Ave. As Ernie mentioned, the project starts at Savage Road. Uh, from Savage Road to the Millbrook Bridge, the intent is to reclaim the pavement, widen out the shoulders, and put uh, appropriate box material under the shoulders. Through that, we'll be looking to define the sidewalk to a more consistent width five feet. I know now it varies and has poles in it, a lot of ups and downs in the curb. We'll be refining all of that. Uh, it'll generally be two 12-foot lanes and a five-foot shoulder from Savage Road to the Mill Bridge. Sidewalk will be maintained in its existing locations and we'll be looking at some of the drainage culvert crossings we know are problematic in that area. From the Millbrook Bridge or Millbrook through the downtown section to Mortland Road, we're going to be doing full depth three construction, which is all new base materials under the roadway, a little more invasive construction uh, to get, you know, to make sure we have a proper road base. That gives us some flexibility in the roadway grades, specifically in the downtown area, where we know we have very low curbing and issues with some of the sidewalk. In this area, we're going to be using a granite, si granite curbing treatment and again, maintaining sidewalks as they are today. Um, in the downtown proper area, we're gonna be looking to make those sidewalks a little bit more consistent and wider to make up for some of the over width in the area of the, the center of the roadway. Moving along from the downtown area to Mortland Street, we're going to be, from Mortland Street out to the end of the job, we're going to be doing uh, reclaiming and widening with box shoulder widenings. Um, again, that'll basically be the core of the roadway will stay the same. We're going to grind it up and then we're going to put some gravels on the outside to widen the roadway um, and give adequate base material underneath it. Sidewalks again are going to be consistent with what the existing condition is. We did notice a lot of areas where we have some drainage issues where the, the grass slopes slope right down to the roadway and we're going to go ahead and we're going to put some curbing in there to make sure that the water goes where it's supposed to go. With all of this change, there's going to be a expansive, 
renovation to the drainage system to make sure that that's upgraded with this project such that we don't have some of the problems that were noted at the last public hearing and that we've seen in the field. On the, from Trundy Road to the north, the, the current sidewalk ends right in about in the area of Navy Street, just past Navy Street. With this alternative from Trundy Road to the north introducing a three lane section, which is northbound, southbound lane, and a center turn lane that can be a, a turn lane for left or right. We're extending that sidewalk all the way to Station Ave on the, on the right-hand side of the road, the east side of the road, water side of the road. Um, that sidewalk, we are still working with the town in terms of what the, and in our design process, in terms of what the terminating end of it is and where we finalize and finish that sidewalk. So what you'll see here is, is more of a concept. Uh, that has not been fully refined. This three-lane section, we're looking at narrowing. As you're all aware, it's a very wide pavement area out there on this, the northern end of the corridor. We're looking at having a five-foot shoulder on one side, on the curbing side, where the sidewalk's going to be, a four-foot shoulder on the other side, two 11-foot lanes, and the 12-foot turning lane in the middle. It really mimics the existing width out there of pavement today we have a little bit more impact for adding the sidewalk on the east side. That area will all be bituminous curbing, paved curbing, and, and uh, paved sidewalks. So with this project, we're going to be, in addition to what I've mentioned for reconstruction, we're going to be looking at some of the, um, the banking of the curb, super elevation they call it, the, the side slopes of the road. We know the road does a lot of inconsistent um, side sloping and I know the the police chief had told us some indications where it was banked the wrong way and there's some drainage issues through years of overlay and pavement rehabilitation uh, with this project we'll be correcting that re redefining the cross slope and leaving it with a well-defined drainage system that captures and collects all of the the roadway through the corridor Ernie do you have anything to add to the brief description I can I can expand more based on comments, but that's a quick overview. Yep. Thanks, Tim. Uh, just a couple ads that we've had. Um, obviously, you've seen CMP out there setting poles. We have not been guiding them to do so or telling them where to put them. Hopefully, they're putting them in the right spot. Um, hopefully, we don't have to come back and have them relocate them because um, that won't look so good. But we really, they've, they've asked what we want for an offset, but I can't tell them yet because we're not quite there yet. So but they have been out there working, but that's not part of our project. And I just wanted to make that known. Also, we've been working with the water district to incorporate their water line with the project, so that all falls into place. We have a lot going on with the, with the corridor, and I think, you know, from the standpoint of what Tim went over, it is, it is fine right now. It's not final. Um, I think, you know, it's got some tweaks that will certainly have to take place, but hopefully we'll get some good comments from folks tonight related to that. Uh, and anything else related to the project. Um, as far as project schedule, I think from tonight, whatever we hear, um, if we hear a lot of good feedback, a lot of positive feedback, we'll continue um, and not refine a whole lot. We'll go in and, and start finalizing things and we'll probably be back, I'm guessing sometime around September, you know, with with a more formal finalized plan with a lot of detail on it incorporated. Um, a lot of the right of way we haven't looked at yet so we're not really sure what we have for right of way out there. We have an idea. Um, it's just based off the, the layout that's there today. It's very fine. It's not, uh, it's not final. So a lot of comments related to that I'm sure. Um, a big thing for me related to what's out there, if you have any private property that's related to it at all. You guys are probably on town water, I'm assuming. Um, is there a town sewer, anybody on town sewer out there? So we don't have to worry about septics or leach fields or wells, which is good. But by chance, if you do have one that you use for other things, please let us know that's sometimes the case. The other big thing is solid drains. If you have solid drains that come from your property to the roadway and it goes somewhere, we're going to need to know where that is so when the contractor gets out there and starts digging, we're going to get into it and we'd like to know up front if it's there. Sometimes we don't, which we have mechanisms to replace it, but it's always better to know if you have those existing out there. So 
let us know after we're done presenting tonight and uh, that'll be helpful as well. Um, so any private property, fences or anything else that's landmarks or granite post, etc. If it's not shown on the plan, let us know and we'll get those picked up by a survey crew. So related to that three lane section, survey is going to have to come back out and pick up some additional topo for us. So you're going to see them probably in a, in a month or so. They got to come out and resurvey the Dollar General because um, we got some issues with what they've done there. So we got to come back out and survey that to make sure we make adjustments or they make adjustments to, to make it fit with our proposed roadway. So schedule wise, back to, back to September, um, we very well, sorry Robin, run you over. Um, haven't had enough coffee yet. Uh, but I think this is pretty complex with all the ads and stuff that we got. Normally I, I'm talking one more public hearing, but I'm thinking probably we might throw another one in there before that September meeting. Um, to refine things to give you a better look at it before we get to that final stage because it is pretty vague right now still. Um, so I'm thinking we might throw another meeting like tonight, informational. It'll be more, more refined, still won't be final, but I think that might be the case. So if we do that, we might be back sometime in July with that plan to show you once again and, and make any more adjustments if possible. Um, and then come back in September to, to really finalize things and start the right away process. Right now we're looking at probably I'd like to get this thing advertised as early as possible, either late 18 or early 19 for the start of 19 construction. That's really where we're looking right now. Which I think is doable, but we got a whole lot of work and a whole lot of feedback and a whole lot of complex issues out there. Related to the three lane section, um, talking with the chief, you know, he's been talking with our Safe Routes to School coordinator. So they're also, the town's also looking at some Safe Routes to School money that can be applied indirectly to the project on side roads to, to make access to and from the school safe for the kids, whether it's rapid flashing beacons, cross, safer crosswalks. So they're looking at that stuff as well as another item to throw at us for the project. So. We keep adding stuff on. Hopefully we stop at some point so we can really start finalizing things, right, Jim? But I think we're getting there. I think, you know, we've had a lot of good dialogue with a lot of folks um, to date, so I think we're in good shape. All right, with that, I know we've been pretty bland, but I'd like to start hearing some comments more so related to the three-lane section. But if you've got other questions related to other parts of the project, absolutely. If you can just come to the mic, just state your name and then ask a question, we'll see if we can get an answer for you. Yep, ma'am. You gotta come up to the mic so they can get it on the TV. Trundy Road. Trundy Road? Yep, starting at Trundy Road, which is right here. Just prior to, it's, it really starts right at Hamilton Marine. Hi, I'm Bain Pollard, and I own the uh, Sunoco station that's in this area. A couple questions. Could you give a little bit of a history of the actual right-of-way dimensions? Many, many years ago when we built, it was my understanding initial right-of-ways weren't what they are today, and I don't know the history and really to how they were expanded to where they are today. And I don't have those answers tonight because usually we don't incorporate that, but we can, we can certainly uh, get that for you. If you want to take one of those comment cards. I've got one, yeah. I, I, I just, what is it, is it 62 feet? Is that what it is today? I'm guessing it looks like 66 point, 66, 66 and a half feet, four okay. odd. I'm okay. just guessing, but that's what it I mean, <coughs> looks like. Obviously the history of Sears Sports going back a long period of time in these roads, but I thought they were back in the 40. Plus, 
many, many yeah. years ago that my deeds used to show that. And then at some point, I assume the state through eminent domain has just made those wider. Yep, there's two things I play dumb on, right away and legal issues. All right, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask that one. Now, my first reaction to the third lane is I think it's probably a wise idea for safety in that area. When we put in the Dunkin' Donuts eight years ago, part of the permitting process that I had to go through was to expand that road. Initially, you guys wanted a third lane for me to ha come up with. The, DO, the engineers that I hired, we worked, it took a year and a half, two years to compromise to come back. We put in the breakdown laid, paid extensively to have that done. Now it looks like you're going to continue in coming and encroaching on me closer with a sidewalk. And I'm wondering, is it imperative? Where did, where did the sidewalk discussions come and why are they extending all the way beyond? I mean, I understand a bicycle lane, but in our area there's very little walk People don't walk to my business, they drive into it. So, so. Yeah, the, uh, the, uh, you know, the discussion. I mean, I'm just wondering why, it, why would it, where would, where's the proper place to stop? So if you could address that a little bit. That's kind of sort of why we're here. You know, we talked to, talk to the town, you know, and we chose to put the sidewalk the whole length. You know, we haven't really talked on termini yet, mm -hmm. so that's, still up for grabs, you know, where, it termina where, where the terminus of that sidewalk is. You know, that's kind of why we're here, too, is to figure out, you know, where's, where's the logistical spot for that to stop. You know, it, and, and the final little quick question I'm going to ask is that could, could you, uh, there's a lot of lines on the map. I'm not sure exactly what's what. Yeah. Um, I do know that the edge of my canopy is very close to the right of way that you people think that you have today there. And so, therefore, I don't know, and uh, I assume that there's got to be a sidewalk between my canopy and the, and the roadway, but I'm not sure if you're asking us to move some things or what the intent is there. We could be. No, I'm just kidding. Um, let's, let's, let's catch up with you after we're done. We can, we can kind of walk through it, take notes. I think a lot of the people will have the same questions yeah. coming along that area to explain uh, that, that whole thing. Yeah, and I, I think that's kind of... You know, not to diffuse any further questions related to the right of way, I think that's kind of why I want to have another meeting, because we're going to take the feedback that we get tonight, apply it, and come back with a more final plan. It's not final, but I think we'll have a better, more understanding to these questions. Right now, all I wanted to vent was the three-lane section. How long should that sidewalk, where should it, where should the terminus of that sidewalk be? Um, Anything related to crosswalks, any logistical spots for crosswalks, I know that's a key element. Um, related to one of the advantages to putting that three-lane section out, it, it should promote further business development opportunities. You know, as you mentioned, it does cost a lot of money. Yeah, so I think there's some a lot of advantages, but, you know, I want to I wanna hear some comments related to those. But those are good comments, and definitely touch base with me after we get done. Thank you. You're kidding. Uh, I evidently came a little bit late. I get thought. You, get your name. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Meredith Ayers. Thank you. Um, I evidently came a little bit late. I thought it was starting at six. And if I, you've covered anything that I'm asking already, I'm sorry. Um, what are the actual dates that work will begin? Do you have any idea of that? And what, how this is going to affect traffic uh, and the, the access of, of traffic going through the town to the businesses in the center of town? Yep, no, those are good questions. Uh, basically, you know, I'm hope, you know, my, my uh, first wish would be the, we advertise toward December of 18 but it's probably gonna slide into early 19, so then when winter vacates, you know, the contract will get started on Route 1. Obviously, mid-season's problematic, or any time of the year is problematic down through CS4. We haven't analyzed a, constru a constructability schedule, um, but obviously that's, 
going to be one of our elements that we'll have to really take a hard look at and see how they're going to manage traffic through the corridor. There's really no detours. Um, so that's one of the things that we're going to have to really focus on, get creative, you know, incentive, disincentive contracts, you know, to accelerate schedule. Obviously, we want to make it as painless as possible. Um, as far as access to and from businesses, contractor has to maintain access to and from during construction to answer that question if that comes up. Um, which end are they going to start on? I don't think we're going to dictate to the contractor which end they're going to start on because then they're going to start raising the price. It's going to be an expensive project as it is and obviously we're not there yet to figure out what the true estimate is but those are good questions and some of that we still have a lot of work to do but looking at at the latest probably early 19 for advertise so probably late March, early April, they'll be starting to construction so of 19. That will be going on during the, during the summer? Right now, yes. Yep, and then, you know, obviously you have peaks and valleys through, through Sears Port, high peaks, you know, July and August. Is that good to say that July and August is your two busiest months, or am I off by, at, you know, do I add half of June and maybe to Labor Day in that equation is, <coughs> yeah, so, ma'am. Phyllis Summer, both a resident and a business owner. Um, I am part of the Main Street Revitalization Committee, as you know, and we were expecting that we were going to have a meeting of the committee with you last fall. Um, it hasn't happened. There were carryover questions from our earlier meeting, and I'd like to repeat them here for the record sure. so that you can consider them again. Um, under the list of considerations, there was a, a turning lane from Goodell Street. There was a crosswalk, possibly near the yard arm or treasures and trash, because we have a lot of pedestrians walking across. We've got Dunkin' Donuts, we've got the mall, you know, whatever. Um, I remember, I think it was you who, who said without a sidewalk and the, um, I forgot what the word is, where you dip down for a crosswalk. Um, yep. That wasn't really possible, but now we're going to have a sidewalk at least on one side. So yep. I'd like to throw that back in the mix. Um, the other, well, there were two other issues, or not issues, considerations. Prospect Street and Route 1 is a biggie. It's blind. Line of sight is very poor, depending on what, what uh, direction you're coming from. And um, I suggested that we install a blinking yellow light, just as a cautionary, because we do have a pedestrian crosswalk at the apartments, and we have people who cannot you know, visually see that until they round that curve. Um, I think a Blinking yellow light is, is it's not going to stop traffic, but it's going to alert drivers to what they're entering and what they can and cannot see. Um, you were going to explore the issue of light poles and lumens, and I don't know if that has been done yet. Okay. Um, are we going to have a committee meeting prior to your public hearings again? We are. Yeah, I think I think right now all those all those questions you just asked are all good ones. We're not there yet. I no. think I think probably when we get ready to come back for that late July meeting, it might be good on that same day to if it's possible to meet with that committee prior to the public hearing mm -hmm. to lay out our answers to mm -hmm. those questions if that'll work for you. Yeah. Um I think, you know, a number of people on the committee have done a lot of work about the bricks and bituminous and lights and James gave us catalogs and uh, so that's all still up for grabs but I think the committee members and I, I'm speaking for some of us here but maybe not all would like to you know begin to finalize some of those concepts and, and be able to put that out to the public and lastly because I am a business owner and um, I'm open from April through October uh, July and August are not just the busy months for businesses. We have a lot of small businesses here. The impact's going to be terrific. I'd like to maintain that thought of how do we do this job but 
protect residents and businesses and not have people go under uh, wheels or financially. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And, and related to like the like the downtown, what type of brick to use? We have a landscape architect that will come into play. Probably we'll introduce him at that July meeting to work with the committee on types of brick if, if the town wants lights, etc. You know, he'll be available to, to work with that committee as well. My name is Rick Schweikert. I live on Summer Street in Searsport, and I'm a downtown business owner. My question concerns something you were just referencing, the landscape architecture. My question concerns the overall scope of the whole project and whether or not you have someone who's sort of in charge of the artistic aspect of it. I want this project to really set Searsport apart. I mean, that's my hope, that it makes it more beautiful and it gets people to stop and stay instead of just drive through, because everybody drives through Searsport. We need them to stop, and so that's what I'm looking for, and I'm hoping we can work with somebody to make it a very nice project. Yeah, no, that's a good comment. I think, you know, with some of the projects that we've had, has anybody been down through a Gunkwit Route 1 since the project's been done? Did you, did you like it? So I, I think that's, a, that's an example of, you know, how we treat these areas. I think we're, we're, we're sensitive. You know, it's, it's not like we can do everything, but we can certainly work with the towns or work with Belgrade Village right now. Belgrade Village has actually started a group to, to raise money for additional landscaping. But the problem that we have here is where the right-of-way is so close, we don't have a lot of room to put plantings. So what that group, maybe the, the committee can pull together a group to work with local citizens to say, hey, if the DOT will, you know, plant a tree or two, do you mind if it's on your front lawn? There's stuff like that that we can do, but unfortunately it's out of our control. But if the town has a selected committee to work with folks, that's something that can certainly be involved with the project. And the whole historic capacity of, you know, you have a historic district out there, so obviously we have to pay attention to the aesthetics of that and maintain that quality as well. But thank you. I'm Marie Underwood. I just need to ask you what town you were talking about when you said, did you see that town? A gunquit. Oh, Gunk well, we need to go down and look at a gunquit. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I can, maybe next time I can bring a video of it. I got a before and after video, if that'll help. Because a gunquit is similar, very similar to Searsport in the fact that you have no drainage out there right now. It's all gravel shoulders with no drainage structure. A gunquit had the same thing, all gravel shoulders with absolutely no drainage structures. And we went curb to curb, and the, and the town actually had a, a bond that they put forth to put from the Wells town line to the York Agunquit town line. They had a bond to put sidewalks the whole length of that two mile project. You know, so they got two mile long pro of, cro of sidewalks down there and added uh, crosswalks. Um, but they're very heavily, a lot of foot traffic down there, which you have here too. So. So when you think about sidewalks, you think about that, the peak times, it might not seem logical in, you know, say, November through March, but other months are those sidewalks needed. So I guess that's one thing that I would like to probably get feedback from the town. So anything that you have related to where that sidewalk stops and starts, talk to Jim and, uh, you know, tell us where that logistical spot may be. You think I'm short? <laughs> Let me help you out a little bit. Thank you. Uh, I'm Mary Curtis and live on Station Avenue. And uh, I would absolutely love to see a sidewalk come up to Station Avenue. It's very difficult to walk along the flea market areas. There's cars parking and coming in and out, turning in and out. And I think it would be a, a great improvement to see a support for people to be able to like come from the yard arm and, and cross the road and walk downtown, stop at the antique mall and things like that. I think it would, it would just be wonderful if, if we could have an extension of the sidewalk <coughs> up that far. Thank you. Any other questions? So that was a yes to her question. <laughs> I can't answer that question. 
the man in the back of the room will have to tell me. Where's the sidewalk going to turn an eye? When, where will it end? When I had my meeting, I, I kind of invited myself to their last engineering meeting to talk about some of the Im impact and things that were being done here. <clears throat> and one of the things we talked about was what would that look like? And um, it, would, it would affect the last business on the line, which happens to be silkweeds. And I didn't see there being a need, at least my personal opinion, to run a sidewalk right in front of them because from that point to um, the main way, it's pretty much tarred anyway. So, so, and I've walked through her, her driveway dozens of times <laughs> between the stores. I, I don't know that there's a real need to, to do that. And there's not a parking issue like down by the flea markets, like what Mary said. You, we're not forced out into the road. There's no problem with walking. You've got to watch the cars that pull in and back out and whatnot. But uh, my thought was to to make the termini right at her property line or just onto her property line so that uh, people could get off and it's still paved pretty much from there to, to the main way if somebody wanted to go to Subway. And that was my, my thought on that. Or whatever ends up there. <laughs> um, I'll just add uh, beyond that, we've had a couple of um, at least three business people who wanted to create uh, new business in that section of, of Searsport. <clears throat> and everyone that came, and, and Bain, Bain was there, I went with Bain to argue with the DOT not to force him to build a, a center turn lane. But everyone that's been here since has been told the same thing. They want, a, they want the business person coming to build that center turn lane. And um, we're doing a rebuild. Now's the time. We do have some space. And at least I never feel like I, um, it's fair for me to have a vision, but my vision of that is not to have a painted side, a painted turning lane, but to have a built up turning lane like what they have in front of Hollywood slots. They, they built up the centers, they put some trees there, they put some nice lighting on them, and um, it acts as a traffic calming device too, because when you enter that section, because of the build up, cars will naturally slow down, and all of us have been to Dunkin' Donuts. I think, uh, and try to pull out and come back to town. And in the summertime, it, it's, a, it's a bear. You've got to make a right-hand turn and go down and turn around and come back because traffic is going too fast. Not that the chief isn't enforcing it, but it's marked 35 miles an hour. People are doing 45. People are probably doing more than that. But it's, this, will, this will act as a definition of you're in a section that you need to slow down. And I think people will be able to get in and out better. The DOT engineers are absolutely right. There should be a turning lane there. It's just now's the time to do it and do it within a project and not force it onto a business. The three people that I talked about, they, they ran away. Uh, they're not building. Uh, they can't afford to put a turning lane. So that's why the concept came about. And my understanding from the meeting I invited myself to <laughs> was it's not basically not taking up much more tarred area. They're not there's about two feet difference. So the only difference is the five feet of sidewalk. So when Bain talked about it comes under the canopy, on your side it's about five feet more. And you know where the trucks would used to pull up. That, that's more than five feet right there. So uh, I, I don't think there's a huge impact for what we're going to get back for, for, for what we lay out. Any questions for me so I can go hide in the back again? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Jim. You know, the, the, biggest, the biggest thing that I can say, we're, we're trying to put a highway through a needle, a needle through a, a very small hole here. And I, I think the design team's done a really good job looking at, you know, what the overall impacts are. And 
what we've done is really a, a good job. That will there be impacts? Yes. You know, from the standpoint of, you know, right now I'll just pro project maybe temporary construction rights, might be some sidewalk easements or maintenance rights needed. You know, so the town can maintain that when we're done. Um, but really, all those temporary rights are for are for the contractor to stand on your property to blend it in. There will be some drainage rights. Obviously, we got some drainage runs that we'll have to get uh, drainage easements from folks. But pretty much all those are right in the existing locations. We'll be maintaining the existing drainage outlets as much as possible. So we're not looking for drainage outlets in some of these front yards. And I, I think from the department's perspective, we've really done a great job trying to minimize as much as possible on any project, not just because we're in CS Port, but I think on any project we really have done done a great job trying to minimize impacts as much as possible to property owners. I think we've come a long way as a department in that in that that entity. Any other questions for me? I can pick it up also. Bruce Probert, I reside at 111 West Main Street, and I have a question on Prospect Street. Uh, for about 40 years now, you've, uh, you've done several overlays, you've done other things, but if you go by there, during a heavy rainstorm, the water comes down and sheets across Prospect Street, uh, across Route 1, rather. It's headed a little bit downtown. In the wintertime, that's ice. And it gets to be interesting when it's ice coming down Prospect Street, what it, if it's well sanded, not too bad. If it isn't, or it's still getting an overlay of water, where you go so you don't slide across Route 1. I wonder if you're going to address that project now. It comes down, and it hasn't been done for about 40 years, it, and you keep working on it. And you have a similar problem by the Yankee Clipper in Belfast. So we know right now in that area that there's uh, a concern with the, the pipes that cross the road and the downstream section in there. There's actually uh, some erosion that's occurred in that channel. So what we, what we envision in that area for the Route 1 drainage is <coughs> curbing on both sides will be sidewalk on the east side and curbing both sides and a closed drainage system that will capture all of the Route 1 water and direct it down that stream channel. As far as the water that's coming down prospect, We'll have to take a closer look to see. I know that uh, looking today, there's, there was a pile of uh, crushed gravel on the other side of the catch basin there that I assumed was placed to try and help capture the water. We'll have to take a little bit of a closer look to see what, um, you know, if we can put some additional catch basins in there at that intersection to help intercept that water that's blowing, uh, flowing by those those catch basin inlets on prospect and getting out into the roadway. So we'll, uh, we'll definitely put that as a high priority to, to see what we can do there. Dick Damaris, 6 West Main Street. Uh, sidewalks, you're going to handle the existing sidewalks. When we've sat down and looked at what we want for surface on the sidewalk, on Main Street, you have roof drains or roof drops coming out onto the sidewalk. Are your engineers addressing going under the sidewalk? Yes. All right. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. drops coming so, down. Some of them go down into the cellar drains down. You know, we'll be looking at all of those drops. Right. Yeah. If there's an existing drop today, we have an application where we run right down, it'll still run down the face of the building, right onto the sidewalk, right into our under drain system. We're, do, we're going to be doing it in Hollowell. So in 18, you can go see Hollowell, you can see Belgrade Village, and you can see downtown West Cassett. Those are what's on my plate for 18. So all kind of similar in nature. You know, obviously, a lot of them have their own characteristics, as does Searsport. You know, so that's what we have to balance as we do these projects. Hollowell is a destination commuter route, CS port, destination tourist route, business route, and you got a Gunquit, 99.9% .9 tourist, Belgrade Village, definitely a commuter, business route, commuter route, maybe three months out of the year businesses. So you all have similarities and, and you all have the same characteristics that, that we've been really working on. And, 
you know, not to say this in a bad way, but you're the last one. So lessons learned on all three of those we're learning and hopefully when we get to construction on this one, we've finalized all the details about how we're gonna communicate, work with the folks that are out there and, and obviously the town, we have a lot of good communication tools that we use out there now. Diane Smith, 7 Leach Street. I'm just um, curious to know if you've decided yet, when you come into Sears Port and heading east and you go over the bridge, the little bridge that's there, um, I was just wondering about the aesthetics of that because that's, as you're coming in, that's kind of like how you're aware that you're coming into the village of Sears Port. And I was hoping that you could do the bridging on that to be very attractive, not like we're on a highway. And is there things that are planned so that that gives you a nice introduction to the town? Yep, there's, there's nothing planned right now, but you just asked the question, so we'll, we'll certainly look at that. Um, I, I did forget to mention, um, we did talk to bridge maintenance. One of the wings, one of the wings wall, one of the wing walls, I believe, is failing or has some issues with it. Right now, they're going to try to fix that. Um, you're right, it is kind of wide. I mean, is there a chance to to do something different. Um, the problem as you, as you travel back west is there's not a lot of room and you got historic buildings in here. And then obviously we heard the issue with the, with the uh, funeral home and parking. Um, the design team did add an eight foot shoulder in there to allow, you know, during funeral events to allow people to park on an eight foot shoulder, which is technically a legal width for parking, but that would also need to probably go through uh, the police chief at those events, so he's aware of it. So if they can put cones out, I think they put cones out now. I heard, I, I believe that's what, what what we heard. I'm talking more about the fencing of it and the design of it, the safety of it, so that it doesn't look so industrialized. The railings and yeah, I can. I've heard it. I can certainly run it by maintenance and see if they would like to. To revisit that but that's that's a whole different group than myself okay. but we'll definitely champion that question back to them and ask them if we can revisit the railings thank you how did Lincolnville ever get their road route one straightened out and work with the bridges. How did everybody come together there? We, we seem to have a problem pulling different parts of DOT together here. It's not different problems. It's, it's, it's all about, you know, budget and communication. I heard the question. Maybe, they, maybe, they'll, maybe they'll be able to do that. Maybe we can incorporate it. I don't know, but that, I, that's the first time I've heard that question, so we'll, we'll see what comes of it. I was rather surprised how because I, I sense a little bit of pushback. It's not your department, it's someone else's department. Correct. You know, you've got it together. Yeah, no, we, we've got it together. It's just a matter of have to ask the question. Right. You know, I don't want to speak on their behalf. You know, that's, you know, I'll, I'll take care of my business, they'll take care of their business, but if we have to come together, we come together. In which we, we've talked about it. You know, last time, you know, we said there was no work on the bridge, but I hadn't really voiced a comment to them saying, hey, anything on that bridge need to be repaired because now it's time to do it. So now I'll ask a question on the railings. Is there, how are the railings? Do they need to be addressed or is there something we can do? So that's just something to back and forth. You know, we, we all work together like on a Gunquit, we had two bridges on that one. So we had bridge and highway come together on that project. We got the same thing, a little bit of maintenance work in Belgrade Village. There's no bridges in Hollowell. Thank goodness, um, but no, uh, that's a good comment, and we'll we'll definitely uh, follow up with that one. Yeah, Jack Merrith, you say sport. Ah, uh, two questions. A uh, short time ago, you questioned about uh, the amount of traffic, peak times. Have you given any consideration to put a traffic counter out there for the summer? So you we, would get we, a true count? We haven't. Um, I'll have to check to see where the counts took place, where they put the tubes and what dates on it. Do you remember, Tim? 
We can certainly find out when the, where they put the tubes, because they must have had tubes across Route 1 in certain locations to get the counts that we have. Right. But we can check into that. You know, they should definitely give you a, a better idea. And the other thing is, uh, as a town, as uh, we, we want to do, like Phyllis mentioned, uh, especially during the sidewalk reconstruction, uh, moving utility lines, poles, uh, preparing for uh, street lights, so it means underground conduit. How soon should we have our plans in place before yours are finalized so they can be incorporated into yours? I would say we can, you know, that I think that July time frame when we come back to update folks again, um, I think that's the time we should really start the discussion if the town wishes to add sidewalk lighting into the project. Mm -hmm. I know the town's working toward getting the utilities moved right. to the back side of the street. So those discussions we should probably, and again, that's part of the discussion with our landscape architect as well, to if that's the direction the town wants to go is to add street lights, mm -hmm. uh, sidewalk lighting, sorry, um, how far, where, right. where do you want them, you know, and then we can start getting estimates together for the town to yeah, take because our, our contractors are going to have to coordinate with your contractors. If you guys hire a different contractor right. to install right, them, absolutely, way, right. yeah. Yeah, and we can't afford any extra work artists, so <laughs> by holding up someone. And if, and if come July, if the town wishes to put street lights or sidewalk lighting in the downtown, we can do it as part of our design. You know, and I won't charge you. Jim, did you write that down? <laughs> Two places, three places, actually. But yeah, I mean, the, the, the whole sidewalk lighting is not a big deal to design. But as Tim mentioned, it does get problematic when you have a lot of stuff out there. But that's something that we can certainly incorporate. You're not talking a long section. You know, then as mentioned was the luminaires at the intersections. You know, what type of lights they are. Um, what type of fixture they are. Are they the LEDs, which is less expensive on the town. So those are things that we'll, we'll look at too. On behalf of the town as we get the utilities in front of us. Can you change those out to more economical fixtures? We still got a long way to go, folks. We, we, we're just touching the outside of the can right now. We need to dive into it now and start applying some of this stuff. All right, well, we'll hang out. Marie Underwood, I've heard a lot of questions about parking. Would you address that? Uh, as far as parking goes, we're real, the intention's not to... to we haven't really dove into the downtown section as far as what the parking looks like. Some, yeah, I think the intent's to maintain what we have, but some of it may come out of, you know, where proposed crosswalks are. If we change the, if we change the proposed crosswalks, then we have to have certain offsets from those crosswalks to parking stalls. So, you know, until we can finalize where those crosswalks are going to be, Right now, the intent is to maintain all the downtown parking that you have there today. Um, and as I mentioned, I think we're trying to work with this area up here with that eight-foot shoulder to technically add parking, but that would be really an approval from the town or the police department to allow that during events, which it, it really happens today. And they coordinate today, right, Chief, with you on, on those events. So I think that's a good accommodation there. Um, we are still having trouble with where the sidewalks termini here, because um, you have historic, then you have the bridge, then good comment, whoever, that, I can't remember who that uh, mentioned it, but it's pretty wide open on that bridge right now um, with eight foot shoulders and stuff, and I'm not sure if there's anything we can do there, but it was certainly a good question that we'll take a look at. Excuse me again, I didn't see LA flag here from Bangor Savings, but currently the road to the left of the bank does not match up with the one that comes by Tozier's, which creates parking 
issues in front of the bank, I felt for years going in and out of there. Are you addressing that at all? Yeah, I think with the with the addition of the the granite curb in that location, and then just the standard uh, 12 foot travel lanes in the shoulder, that's going to clean that up a lot. Because right now, it's, there's no really defined barriers out there that prevent anybody from doing anything. So when we get done, okay. it doesn't take much to go over that granite curb to pop a tire. They'll only do it once, hopefully. Dale Tozier with Tozier's Markets here in the downtown Searsport. Um, my concern is during the construction period, the flow of traffic. Uh, through, the, through the town in the summertime now, it's really tough to get in and out of the side roads. With the construction going on, it's going to shut down a lot of Main Street business. And if we could get some type of help, whether it's from you guys, from the contractors, from the town, <laughs> to get the people out of the side streets and out onto Main Street and people from Main Street onto the side streets. That would be a big help, I think, and help the downtown businesses. Yeah, and unfortunately, I know the state doesn't um, help for business uh, support. And I think, you know, with Hollowell, we're looking at, we're, we're trying to think outside the box. I mean, it's just kind of the same idea with Hollowell, a lot of through traffic. Um, a lot of business on both sides of the road. We're looking at temporary sidewalks, you know, under construction. We're looking at different media releases. You know, I can envision at times, and this is just, this is at 10,000 feet. This isn't finalized by any stretch, but some of the things we're thinking about is shifting close one side or the other for parking, move the contractor over so one side of the street's totally open put temporary access on the side they're on, because we've got to provide access 24-7 while they're working. And if it changes for a couple hours, a contractor is supposed to notify you saying, hey, you're going to lose access to your driveway for an hour while we put this pipe in there. You know, I, I was down here a little bit on my back and forth to, to Callis and other places when they were doing the overlays down through here. Holy cow. It's you know, just the overlays itself, which is just putting pavement down, rolling it, and, and keep going, cause backup and, and issues. So now we're digging five feet down, you know, replacing sidewalks. So it's, it's a task, but I, I think, you know, with these other projects, we've learned a lot of lessons on how to develop, develop and, and get things done without those impacts. So we still got a lot of work to do, but that's a good comment. <coughs> Okay, with that, you know, I, again, I thank you all for coming. A lot of good comments, more comments than we heard last time, different ones, which is good. Um, we'll hang out up here. There's enough of us if you've got individual questions to ask. Have, have you guys uh, explored the idea of uh, nighttime work for our project? I wasn't going to say that because I didn't hear, figure out, how does everybody feel about nighttime construction? Off the record, okay, I, I'm just looking for a quick second. My memory's going to go blank. Those that are in attendance right now would prefer nighttime construction. Yes. Yes. Not. So, I mean, I, I think from, from my basis, you know, it's a, it's a good thing to, I wasn't going to bring it up, but I didn't break that. He did, just so you know. Um, you know, I, I think there's some real value in nighttime construction through the midsection. How many apartments over those buildings would be my own like, concern? Probably varies. You probably have a lot of apartment buildings up over. That's the only thing that concerns me there is we're impacting those, those tenants. Um, how many tenants are here tonight? Yeah. None. So, so one of the things that we'll evaluate is, okay, there's impacts if we work during the day, there's impacts if we work at night. So, I mean, that's just some of the things that we have to evaluate moving forward. And maybe certain times of the year, 
Um, how many of you folks in the room are seasonal folks that are here during the summertime and gone during the winter? You know, so that's the other aspect that we have. Some people are, are snowbirds and head south to warmer climate, which I can't blame them. So we have some of those folks also we have to deal with that won't be around when we're constructing maybe. So there's a lot of, a lot of balls in the air that we're going to put together here. And thank you again for coming. A lot of good comments. And we'll stay after for any individual comments. Thank you.